Hey, everybody, it's the coach. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Up next, we've got what should be a great matchup between the New England Patriots and the Denver Broncos. I'll have scores around the league for you at the half, but it's time for a little football. So we'll hand it over to our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. EA Sports coverage of the NFL has us at the foot of the Rockies just west of downtown Denver at Empower Field at Mile High. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the New England Patriots and the Denver Broncos. And hello again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, we look at this Bronco team. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. On the other side of the field for the visiting Patriots, they come in mired in a brutal stretch right now. Losers of eight straight games. Can you imagine going two straight months without winning a game and still trying to hold it together? They've got to find some inspiration somewhere that can lead them to a victory. The calendar has turned to December, and we're in the home stretch now as we're underway in week 13. This fielded a few yards into the end zone, and no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25 yard line. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. And a glance here at their quarterback standing six foot three. And what I enjoyed watching this week when we had a chance to watch them at practice the easy camaraderie that he has with his offense. A lot of respect. A lot of respect, and frankly, I thought it spilled over to the defense. All the defensive guys were coming over and teasing and joking with him. You can tell they respect the heck out of him and really want to play well for him. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. They'll run for the first time with Phillip Lindsay. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. The second down play results in a loss of two yards. Three and out, a real danger here on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 12. Now back to throw. The open man is Smith. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken on, down at midfield. A very solid gain of 27. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. That's going to set him back five yards. On the ready. Right there, right there. 54 Mike. Rip left, rip left. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. He'll find Lindsay here. The starters defensively now for the Patriots. Against the pass, they've had some issues, ranked number 23 in the NFL right now. And I think you're going to see some changes in the offseason, whether it's through the draft, free agency, maybe even both. They definitely need some help in the secondary. On second down, a run with Lindsey. Nine good yards here on the run, and now third down. 52 to He'll look to throw. And able to find Kirk complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 29-yard line. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive, and they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down, they did. Big-time pickup for them, and now... I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone. Because the closer you get to the end zone, 
the field can, gets condensed. Makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. Taylor, and he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. Four yards the pickup, first down. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. The pickup goes for 13 and sets him up first and goal. The impressive opening drive continues and just space being created by those guys up front. We're seeing this the same way, aren't we? We are seeing... And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. A great effort there. His fourth touchdown on the year. And the Broncos take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. Well, these guys scored touchdown after touchdown in that win a week ago. So how do they come out this week? Same way. They've got that momentum going, a touchdown on the opening drive. I think it's safe to say that they're in a groove, isn't it? I mean, a lot of times we've seen where teams have scored. Oh, and this is blocked. Picked up by the offense. This is a live ball. And Fortune is smiling on them, no doubt. That turns into a two-point conversion. And they extend their lead. Unreal. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. So here come the Patriots getting ready on offense. And we get a glance here at their leader, the man who will be calling the plays under center. And I liked what his head coach told us about him this week, that no matter what happens, he, whether he throws seven interceptions or seven touchdown passes, he's the same assertive leader in the huddle on each and every play. He can throw the seven interceptions, just blame the football, blame anything else, and still carry himself like he is the man. It's like you, assertive in our production meetings. On, well, especially when we're talking, talking about ordering dinner, ordering some snacks. I was snacks. just going to say. That's, that's where I go. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. It'll be a two-yard game, Ooh. and that'll make this a second down. And the big boys up front in the trenches, what do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Off the draw, here's Michelle. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of one, and just like that, it's third down. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Throwing left side, it's complete. And this is going to be another first go, down baby. as they'll make Let's the go. tackle at the Broncos' 27-yard line. Show a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 27. Looking to throw. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. <laughs> in for the score as his guys are on the board here in this first quarter. They haven't fully climbed the mountain, but they've started the ascent here with that score. I like that, right? They've, I think they've left base camp now, there okay? So they've started to move their way up the mountain. Long way to go, but at least they know it's manageable. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. He's got it, so they take just the one here, and that makes it an 8-7 game in the first. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep, and no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Check, 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 check. 
On play action, they'll throw. And that is incomplete. Showed off the arm strength there, but to no avail, second down. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. They're going to look to throw. Open man, that's Noah Fant, the tight end. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. The last catch did get three, but they're still left needing seven yards on third down. He's got his tight end fan. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Good work, boys. Let's go. Let's go. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up blitz coming, and down he goes. An extra corner comes on now for the Patriots D on third down. They'll set up to throw. And the throw there going to be incomplete. And I feel like my man, Old Mo, momentum might be changing jerseys right now. How about what they just got done? They scored a touchdown their last drive. Now here's a three and out. Maybe momentum's getting ready to creep to the other sideline. And maybe getting a little too cute there on the punt return. Sometimes they forget Paramount holding on to that football. I really do believe most of the return guys think to themselves, when I get the ball, I'm going to make the play that's going to change yeah, the I'm game. I'm going to break it. I'm going to break it. And you love that they have that attitude, but your point is so well taken. What do you have to do? First and foremost, hold on to it. Take care of the football. That's all he needed to do. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. They'll get four out of that, and it'll bring up a third down. Back to throw. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. Picked off right around the 43. And to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line, that's where they'll take over. This interception will go on the record of the quarterback, but as a receiver, you've got to understand where you are in the field. Middle portion, you know it's going to come in hot. Square your body to the quarterback and be ready to make the catch. And Denver getting set to take the field. Well, what do you think? You get the ball off the turnover near the middle of the field. You take a shot here in the first play? You know I'm big on that. I love when I have great field position after a turnover. I feel like I might have them a little bit off balance. I prefer to take a shot, but a lot of coaches will tell you you only do it if you trust the guy who's got the football in his hands, meaning if it's not there, he won't force it downfield and maybe turn into an interception. He'll go to the check down, go to a second option, and go ahead and take the play that's in front of him. And that'll set him back five. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw, and he whips that one incomplete there. He was looking to get it to Phillip Lindsay there, and that'll make it third down. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. He'll drop to throw. And that is incomplete. They don't want it, fellas. They don't want it. Keep playing hard. You hear the fellas. calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender is making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant to the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. Let's go, boys. Let's go. 
Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. A tale of two extremes already in this game. A touchdown pass on their opening drive, followed by an interception last time out. Now, it sounds like things balance out, right? What's that, that mythological thing that we do? If you have a candy bar, have a diet soda with it, it balances it out. And we know that's not really true, right? Because the interception, that sting lingers a little bit longer. Got to come out now and put together some nice plays. From the gun, they run with Michelle. Takes it to the 26, just a one-yard gain. Out of the gun now on third down. A 50-50 ball here, and it's intercepted. Picked off near the 44. You see me out here? That's right. We can't be stopped. First quarter, and now he already has two interceptions. Yeah, he's got to guard against being tentative from this point forward, though. He's got to still make the right reads, make the proper throws. I've seen guys in this league throw four interceptions in a game and win. He's got to understand, put it behind you, keep pressing forward. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. They'll run. It's Lindsey, and he gets it down to the 32. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Watch tight, tight ends right. Watch tight, tight ends right. On first down, right back to Lindsey. And he struggles to get a yard here, maybe a yard, down to the 31. That's what I'm talking about. Second and nine now. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. And now look at him go. Pass the 20. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Patriot defense has a touchdown. Charles, I'm looking at you, and understandably, your mouth is wide open in disbelief. What were they thinking? That's going to be one of the great mysteries, but I do know this. When they went out on offense, I will guarantee they told them, don't just make anticipatory throws. Make sure you see it before you throw it. Didn't happen here. Trying to protect that lead, and now they gave it up. Elliott on for the extra point. And it's up and good to make this now a 14-8 ball game. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. On first down. It's Taylor, and from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Second and six, just inside the 30. Second quarter about to begin from Denver. It's the Broncos in possession of the football as they are looking at a second down and six coming up. Second and six. A little check down to Lindsey. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. Now the guilty party that time, Charles Leno Jr. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. They'll run with Taylor. And an alley to run. Without the previous penalty, that would have been a first down. Instead, it's just a gain of 10. The Broncos on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and six. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. His first catch, good for eight and a first down. They'll run on first down. Taylor. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Watch the backfield. 
Back to throw here. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. But he's got Smith here. Uh, he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. Catch number 44 of on the year. It's a first down. This quarterback now 9 of 16 through the air as he's got it first and 10. On first and 10, it's Lindsey. And he'll take it across the 50 and into New England territory. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Let's go. On second down, it's Taylor. And able to push forward for right around three yards down to the 42. On second down now, it's Lindsey. And again, the run defense stout this time. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. This offense, two for two on third downs on this drive. They're in for a tough test here, though. Third and long. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. They converted twice on third down that drive already, but couldn't make it a third. We always talk about in-game adjustments. How about what the defense did there, able to shut them down on that attempt? And yeah, that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Patriot offense set to take over again. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense mm -hmm. at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. They'll run it. This is Michelle. He was brought down there by Will Parks. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Here's a second and seven. He's going to sling this deep downfield. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Trying to take a shot, but it's third down. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Got his man. That's Harry. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Now a first down carry, it's Michelle. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They'll drop the throw. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Pat O'Donnell, to kick it away. And look at this. It's a fake. Run! And this is going to come up well short as they stop him on fourth down. A little trickeration there, but it doesn't fool this defense. And the Broncos will take over on downs. And coming out now, the Broncos. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football away. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. But you've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it over, You didn't over, turn it over, right? You're giving, it, you're giving your defense a chance because you're punting the ball away and they're set to go on the field as opposed to sudden change after a turnover. Wow, now we've got to go out there and stop people. So, yeah, there's always something positive to be gained from it. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. 
The Broncos on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This is third and seven. He'll look to throw. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And right now, I know a lot of their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. Let's go, let's go! Now the Patriots gearing up to go now. Me and you. It's just me and you. Get it. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Got a man open. That's Harry. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. That'll be a New England first down, a gain of 12. And now whistles and a flag. And I think we got a jump here. So five yards there is one of the big guys up front moved. And in a 4-3 front, you've got the two defensive tackles right near the football. I know there's a lot of movement around there, but they're always taught to have one eye on the football. Apparently, that didn't happen. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. They'll run with Michelle, and he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll wind up being a loss of two, and that's going to bring up a third down. They'll look to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 40. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. On second down, Michelle. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. Here we go, D. Here I come. Back to throw now on first down. And he's going to have the hook up here with Harry. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Here we go. Here we go. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. Set, ready? AT Gator. Trying to pound it in here with Michelle. He gets this down to the three, but no further. Brought the power run out of the bag and got a couple extra yards with it. They'll get six on the play, and it's going to take us to the two-minute warning. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. And we remind you, coming up at the half, we'll join who, Charles? The coach. <laughs> the coach, Jonathan Coachman, standing by. And he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. From three yards out. And the Patriots, they add on to their lead. Now he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over. Elliott now to add the extra point. He knocks it through, and he extends the lead to 21-8. To so a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays, and it ends with a New England touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. 
Out there to start their next drive, Philip Lindsay and the Broncos. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. A gain of 28 yards there and give him a first down. Come on, set. 60 out law. 52 to Mike. Deep. Get it. They'll look to throw now on first down. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Second and 10. This is the tight end fan. They face a third and four after that last completion gets him six. He'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. It is tough to complete pass against zone defenses. The windows that you see open, they shrink pretty rapidly. How about being able to hit a moving target against a zone before the next guy can get there and make a play on the ball? Not easy for any quarterback, no matter the situation. And there, the defense won the battle. And this is one of the risks you run when you attempt a long field goal. If you miss, the defense takes over the spot of the placement. So now they've got a chance to get one more drive in before halftime. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 45. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked off at the 48. And what a return as he brings this all the way back down to the 20-yard line. So the first thing that crossed my mind is why didn't they just sit on the lead and take it to the locker room? They're yeah. in good shape. Absolutely. And from this spot on the field, now you've given the other side a chance for points here going into intermission. Yeah, you changed the momentum of the game, and it's something you did not need to do. So the Broncos coming out now. Well, what a break here. Turnover late in this first half, and now they're set up in field goal range already. With a chance to get more. So what you're telling your unit as they go out onto the field is very simply this. We've got three in our hip pocket. Don't jeopardize that. Let's attack and go for the big one here. Let's go get six and give ourselves a chance to really feel good going into the half. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Now back to throw toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. They'll look to throw here, and he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Christian Kirk, his sixth touchdown of the season as his guys are back within a single score. I think everyone in the league talks about finishing, don't they? Doesn't matter whether it's a quarter, a half, a game, a series, whatever. But they're finishing the first half in fine style, putting that one in the end zone. They did, and they didn't leave much time on the clock either. Well done. This time, the extra point up and good, and the lead will shrink to six. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. On one hand, as we look at some of his struggles with the three interceptions, he's got to be upset. On the other hand, they're still winning this game. So how does he take care of the ball the rest of the game? That's what his teammates are interested in because they pick things up for him throughout. you got to look over the defensive side, the kicking game. Those guys have made it work for him. Now this is going. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. 
Picked off by Jordan Lewis. Certainly feels like the classic second guess, but let's be honest about it. They had a chance going to halftime with the lead. Why did they take a chance with a throw there? I don't understand that. Well, that's what I'm wondering. And now this defense has to try to protect that lead going into the locker room. Here again comes the captain of this offense leading his crew back out there now. He's had a solid start to this game, but bottom line is they're losing, so he doesn't care about his stats. He just wants to right the ship on the scoreboard. He wants to actually increase his stats because he feels like if he does, that means things will get... That's caught inside the 20. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Looking to throw. He's got his big tight end, Fant. And he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Second and two. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down, so let's sort this out. So reverse the celebration. We'll see if they have something else in their bag of tricks. And isn't that always tough to watch when they score and you see the excitement? And then when they and that is caught. Touchdown, Denver. Noah Fant, his ninth touchdown of the season. And now they can recapture the lead if they can make the PAT. We've been together a few years, and you know that I really ride the wave of old momentum, don't I? <laughs> yes, you do. There is a heck of a difference between being down six and possibly being up one. And right now, they've got that opportunity. No doubt. That is a big-time score and a big-time swing in momentum. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And that will give them the lead here as we get on towards halftime. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. This is taken at the three. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Pats at the line, ready to go. Now we're under 20 seconds to go in the half. I'm guessing the wise play here is be safe. That is the wise play because if you think about trying to fool them here, here's what you're facing. You're facing a loosened up secondary, playing a lot deeper than normal. So even if you run some type of misdirection, you're only going to fool them for a second or so. And guess what? They're so deep, they're really not going to be out of position. Take the knee, get to the locker room. All right, Brandon, thank you very much. We're starting to get near the home stretch of this NFL season. It's week 13. So let's get an update on what's going on. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. Meanwhile, in our game, no shortage of offense as each team has been able to move the ball effectively. Will the defenses show up in the second half? To find out, we give it back to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Broncos with a lead, and they will be receiving this kickoff here as quarter three is underway. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now we get a peek at the captain of this offense heading back out there. Any surprise in your mind he's out there to start the second half after four first-half interceptions? He's to be surprised by a lot of things, partner, but in this case, I'm not because you know they want him to be their guy and the only way to truly establish that is to give him a chance to work through some of the issues he had in the first half here's second and eight toward the center of the field but it's incomplete he was in search of his tight end Tyler Higby and that takes us from second to third down they're going to look to throw and that is incomplete 
But it appears they're going to come up empty on this first drive of the second half, still down by that slim margin. Yeah, and that's okay. You know, when, when you sit and analyze it, they're not happy about what happened, having to go to the bench. But this gives them a chance to let their defense do some work while they on the sidelines go over what they're doing offensively and formulate a proper plan. Denver offense at the line, ready to go. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense, we got the lead. Yeah. We got the, de we got the, got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see what the offense gets done. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Here's Lachlan Edwards now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on Come into on, the man. end zone for a touchback. Here he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. And unfortunately for him, this montage, not highlights, low lights in this one, partner. Way too many mistakes, too many errors. Sometimes it's on the guy throwing the ball, sometimes it's on the teammates, but it all comes back to him. It goes on his ledger. So when you're playing this type of a game, you start to look for other ways to get out of it. Do you throw it to shorter passes, some check downs, maybe use your legs a little bit more, don't throw the ball downfield, all those things you're looking for, and then you gotta watch the tape and figure it all out so the next time it doesn't happen again. So far the tape, four interceptions. They'll wind up losing a full 10 yards on the play. Following the penalty, Michelle looking for a crease, can't find one, stopped at the line of scrimmage. Tackle by Bradley Chubb, the number five pick in the 2018 draft. They'll set up to throw. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. It's picked up by the Broncos. And now he's got him in a great spot at the eight-yard line here, first and goal. So they elect to decline it. And why not? Just go ahead and let the play stand and they'll take that. A terrible spot for a holding call as he'll try again, but now from further back on first and goal. He'll dump this one off to Lindsey. Nice gain of eight that time, but it's second and goal. He wasn't ready. He wasn't there. Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second and goal? They'll try to run with Lindsey. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a Bronco touchdown. Philip Lindsay, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Broncos use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. Second effort there, he was determined to find pay dirt, and he did. I think that's a great example of what coaches talk about, a back that runs behind his pads, and he uses pads to get him into the end zone. Fairbair now to add the extra point. And with that, the lead is up to eight. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Pats at the line, ready to go. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go-around. A big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over, the other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. You know, they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Now Michelle. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. That'll be a New England first down, a gain of 12. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Back to throw. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. 
And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Give him 15 yards on that one, and New England has a first down. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Tack McKinley in there to get him, and that is sack number six now for him on the year. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. They'll set up a throw. Gets this into the hands of the tight end, Higby. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. They'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. He'll drop to throw. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a... And he'll go down. Brought down at the 20-yard line. Bradley Chubb make that now eight sacks for him on the season. It felt like he was in the pocket all day, never got rid of it. And when you have that much time, you've got to either find someone open or get rid of it because with that amount of time to throw the ball, that means the offensive line's done a really nice job. So he splits the uprights and has to be a nice feeling. Right when it left his foot, knew it was good. Yeah, just like a good three-point shooter in basketball, right? Release the ball, fall back on defense without even looking. You know it's going in the hoop. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple this. extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. This quarterback now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and 10. Back to throw here. He'll let this go deep for Sutton. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Shotgun snap and a give to Lindsey. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Completes it to Fant on the right side. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. Online, but off the right. crossbar, no good. A long-range effort denied three points at the very end. All things considered, a pretty good kick. Just cruel punishment there to be denied by the crossbar. If you're going to hit from that distance, sometimes you're going to need a little luck. And unfortunately for him, this time the break goes against him. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. On the ground, Michelle. And he's got it across midfield and into Denver territory. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. And he will find his man on the end route. Complete. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. That one good for 13 at a New England first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They run the counter. Dobbins. Look at this. Middle of the field. A breakaway. And all the way in. Touchdown, New England. A great play there. His first touchdown on the year. And once again, the Patriots are back out in front. And there the counter play proves successful for the touchdown. What typically makes a counter play in general successful, Charles? But what you're trying to do, Brandon, is to get the team moving in one direction, meaning the defense. Get them going in one direction and then wall them off with your blocking and bring it back in the other direction. That way, you don't actually have to punish them with your blocking. You just position them. And if you have any kind of a good back, he'll take full advantage of it and gain good yardage. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This is taken at his four. And a penalty marker's down on the field. 
And they might be backing up a bit here to start the drive. Yeah, this is going to put them back with a not great field position. So they really got zero benefit at all, right? Sometimes you can absorb a penalty when you get a big return. Then the penalty brings it back, but you still have great field position. As you pointed out, not in this case. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. No gain on the play there. It'll be second down. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and 10. And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. And he goes down. It's a Patriots sack. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. This is taken at the 15. They'll call that a 61-yard punt. He got all of that one. And the Patriots take over. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Yeah. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Keeping it on the ground on first, Michelle. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. 18, Gator. 47. Check, check, 47. He's tired of me, Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. Nikhil Harry was the intended target. Third down here. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. And he comes back with one complete. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Denver offense at the line, ready to go. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Holding offense. That hold coming from the middle of the line, the center. And it's difficult for him because sometimes you've got people right over you, and as soon as you snap it, trying to get your hands up and block them, you can be a little bit late getting it done. And a short pickup here as he'll get across the 10 to the 11-yard line. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Welcome back now to Denver. And we've got a dandy here, a one-point game as we begin the fourth. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. As I was watching the play unfold, my eyes immediately went to the referee because I wanted to see, was he going to put those two hands over his head and that <laughs> universal signal for a safety? But it's at the one-yard line. You know you're playing with fire when you get sacked that close to the goal line. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. We saw a number of good games earlier today. This one might top all of those. It's been a dandy as we come up on first and 10. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Bradley Chubb in there to get him, and on the season now, that is nine sacks for him. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. 
Now flags come in. Looked like one of the Patriots might have moved. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. He'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. New England on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This will be third and forever. They'll drop to throw. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. They'll come out throwing here on first down. He'll find Lindsey here. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Seven yards on the play, and it'll make it a second down. Second and three. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. They'll look to throw. This one complete to the running back, Lindsey. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield, incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Second and 10. He gets this into the hands of Taylor. It'll be a pickup of just two, and all of a sudden here, it's third down. He'll look to throw. And able to find Kirk complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 29-yard line. 54, right there, right there. 54, Mike. Watch QB drop. Back to throw now on first down. Screen pass to Lindsey. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. They don't want it. They'll look to make it three for three on third down conversions. They need a yard here. Now back to throw. He's got his tight end fan. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. They'll get just a couple, but the sticks move again. They'll try to draw Lindsey, and he'll take it from the 18 to the 15, a gain of three. The last run got three, now here's second and seven. Here's a second and seven. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. And he'll only get this to the 14 as he'll come up well short of the first down. Have to kick this field goal, don't you? No question about it. Look at the clock. Look at the situation. Kick the field goal. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And with that, they will move ahead by two here in the fourth. 
So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? The Pats at the line, ready to go. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Here's second and eight to Michelle on the dump off. Four yards on the pickup, and that's going to lead to a third down. Out of the gun now on third down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. He's been big. Two touchdowns earlier. Now he's got a first down here. It's a party now. It's a party now. Off the play fake. He'll look to throw. Wide open receiver complete. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? So a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 25-yard line. On play action, they'll throw. And this one hauled in by Rudolph. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. A good pick up there, a 22. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. That's complete right around the eight. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. He'll get only two there, and it's second and goal. Mason. Now he's over the line and into the end zone for a Patriot score. It's the fullback. His first touchdown on the year. And the Patriots have retaken the lead. And they just powered it in right there, Charles. Three tight ends out on the field. The fullbacks for the defense, they knew what was coming. They knew, but they weren't able to stop them. They knew they had to meet them with a little bit of force. But on that play, the big guys up front won the day. Elliott on for the extra point. And the lead is up to five. So that drives seven plays in length, and it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And this one complete to Smith. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. The throw over the middle, taken in. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. He'll look to throw. This is the tight end fan. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. He's back to throw. He's got his big tight end, Fant. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Back to throw. Now you're right on the edge of field goal range. You still got time, but get up to the line of scrimmage and get set. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Back to throw. And he can't corral it. That would have wrapped it up if he'd been able to hold on. Instead, it brings up third down. Tight end left. Tight end left. 
So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. And down by five, they've got to go for it here on fourth down. They'll look to throw. Looking left sideline, it's complete. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. They'll set up to throw. Well, they did the part they had to do. Quick throw, got the first down. But that doesn't allow them to relax. They still have plenty of work to do. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Back to throw. He'll find Taylor. That's complete. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. So that one a hold right guard. And you understand why offensive and defensive linemen probably go to martial arts schools and work on their hands so often because that could be the make or break difference on a play. This time he had to... And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So the defense helping him out a little bit here late in the fourth. Man, you're exactly right. And when you're the one doing the chasing, you'll take a little help from the other guys, won't you? He'll drop to throw to the end zone, but it's incomplete. Cortland Sutton was the man he was looking for, but it'll be second and goal. Another shot from the one on second and goal. Second and one. And he's got it. It's caught for a touchdown. And they have taken the lead here in the final seconds. How many people are watching this one right here who gave up? Because that score... They might want to try and rush back into this stadium. <laughs> yeah. What looks like is going to be the game-deciding score, although a little bit of time left, so you can't count your chickens before they're hatched. Well, they better come back in here and watch this one because you and I, we're not going anywhere. We want to see this one play out. And now the offense is going to stay out there as the Broncos will go for two. They'll try and run it here, and he'll get into the end zone. So now a field goal would only tie as they up their lead to three. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Pats at the line, ready to go. So you're right there, but obviously the clock is not your friend. How do you handle this situation? You're thinking two plays. One, to get yourself in position for the second one. Whether you're able to get into field goal range or you have to try another deep pass, another Hail Mary. But you're trying to get the first one to a receiver, get out of bounds, and give yourself a chance to set things up for an easier shot at it. We'll see if they can do it. Might be easier said than done. That's to his running back, Sony Michelle. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left. A second down completion got him seven. Now here's third and three. Now one final throw here is incomplete, and that is how this one will come to an end. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So for the Broncos, the win moves them a couple games over 500 now at 7-5. and five. And they will hit the road next week to take on the Kansas City Chiefs. Meanwhile, for New England, this season is beyond salvage now as they fall to 2-10. and 10. And they'll try again next week at home against New England. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gordon saying so long, everybody.